Thank you for joining us today. My name is Claudette Esterin Campbell, and I am the chairperson and president of this foundation. We were to have a guest presenter today, but due to circumstances beyond our control, we did not receive the video. So you're stuck with me again. And I am extremely honored to be presenting our message today, it being Resurrection Sunday, as well as the eve of the new month of April. April is when we start a new sub-theme, and that will be Dare to Dream. Those who follow us know that each month and each year we have a theme, and monthly we break it down into bite sizes to more deeply and effectively illustrate what we are aiming for. This year's overarching theme is I am woman, innovative, and resilient, and it was selected by our director treasurer, Gloria Rose Saunders. Every month, one of us directors or a friend member of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation is asked to create a sub-theme that we highlight for the particular month. April's selection is Colleen Crary Delamotas. She's a member of the Daughters of Sheba Foundation, and as she is inviting us and encouraging us to dare to dream. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection was all about dreaming having a larger vision of his own journey through the world, and even a greater dream for what humanity could be. Let me dive more deeply into this topic of daring to dream, daring to be, with a story about an inspiring woman. She was born in 1880 and had more than her fair share of setbacks and hardships. In spite of all her trials, she refused to quit and refused to let any limitation hold her back. She was accepted into Radcliffe College in the U.S. at the age of 16 and graduated cum laude. Her single determination was to improve the lives of others and she became an advocate for the blind. Her assistance helped the American Association for the Blind become an institution. Her speaking skills and gentle spirit won her the admiration of her audiences around the globe. Through sheer determination, she wrote four books, not one, but four books, two of which became international bestsellers. One is still in public, is still being published, and it's published in more than 50 languages. There were lesser known works that are now out of print. One such volume was on the issue of faith. This woman has been honored in a number of significant ways. Streets have been named after her in the U.S., Spain, and in Israel. Hospitals and schools bear her name. She's one of a few women depicted in the United States Capitol. Her bronze statue graces Statutory Hall, and her picture graces State Quarter for Alibaba. Her name, Helen Keller. Helen Keller allowed nothing to stand in her way. She, remember, at 19 months old, was afflicted with scarlet fever. The, the illness robbed Helen of both her sight and her hearing. Nevertheless, Helen excelled at public speaking and became an international celebrity for her intellectual prowess and strong wit. Helen Keller accomplished more than most people who possess their hearing and eyesight. A question that we all must ask about her and people like her is, what made her excel? What made her achieve at such a high level? In her own words, Helen said, quote, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. One of the greatest problems today is that many people are losing their sense of adventure. Even more are settling for a boring life of fitting in with what everyone else is doing. Somewhere along the way, we traded excitement for monotony. Somewhere along the way, we exchanged daring for dullness. Somehow, we gave up courage for complacency. Somewhere along the way, we gave up the dream. At some point, we stopped living and started existing. 
This Easter season reminds us that we were placed here to be daring, brave-hearted, and willing to take a stand for our dreams and beliefs. In 2 Timothy 1, verses 7, it says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Throughout the Bible, we see characters who lived a life of incredible adventure. These people never lost the sense of daring. Moses led people, led people through the wilderness. Joshua conquered the promised land. John the Baptist proclaimed the way. Paul spent his life planting new churches. The term that is translated timidity literally means cowardice. This is a fundamental and complete lack of confidence. The reason for fear is a failure to believe in ourselves and a power greater than us. So why do we lose our daring? What drains us of our daring, our capacity to dream? One of the things that does that drains us of our capacity to dream is fear, our loss of courage. Fear is the direct opposite of faith, and there is no possible way that the two can mix. The things that create fear in us will always drain faith from us. There are a number of things that people generally fear and generate fear in people. Worry about the future, fear of the unknown, insecurity, having a world-centered focus, a materialistic focus, and misunderstandings. Trials come, crises arise, and challenges abound. It is very easy to allow the situations and circumstances of life to overwhelm us. The second thing that uh, drains us of our dreams is apathy, a loss of passion. We lose our sense of adventure when we lose our sense of passion. The moment we lose our passion, we lose our spirit and desire for adventure. Apathy sets in when we stop caring. Apathy is a long, slow, spiritual death that comes little by little. Apathy is focused on self-centered, material things. It is a spirit of ingratitude, and it is evidenced in a lack of concern for others and ourselves and a lack of action. The third thing that robs us of our dream is being too quick to compromise, having losing our conviction in, in, in life, in ourselves. We lose our daring when we start to compromise on our dreams. They are small and seemingly insignificant choices that we make, but they start us down the path toward compromise. Compromise is giving up something that matters in exchange for something that matters less. Over a period of time, little compromises start to add up and become larger and larger. Many of these small decisions are of little importance, but they add to a spirit that gives up and gives in at a moment's notice. The fourth and final thing for today that causes or contributes to us losing our daring ability to dream is fear of failure, a loss of confidence. One of the issue that everyone faces in life is failure. The problem with failure is that we often connect it to faith. The common belief is that if the attempt fails, there is a lack of faith and God is not present. So how can we regain our daring? How can we start to dream again? How can we recapture the spirit of adventure? The first thing I might suggest is tap into the power of God, source, Allah, life. Timothy, that we refer to, felt that he was powerless. The situation in the church that he was building seemed to be beyond his control and above his ability. In reality, it absolutely was above and beyond him. Timothy could not do this work on his own. Paul gently reminded him that God seldom works in us when we do only what we can accomplish on our own. The outpouring of God's power and resources cannot happen when we are trying to rely on ourselves. The second action we can take to re recapture our dream is to tap into the love of God. Love has the power to change even the hardest hearts, 
and love can transform the life of people. In times of stress and difficulty, we run the risk of becoming so focused on our problems that we forget about other people. Thirdly, we should tap into the mindset of God. Again, Paul told Timothy to be self-disciplined. The term translated self-discipline literally means to have a secure and sound mind. Paul was telling Timothy to keep his priorities straight. Timothy was likely ready to either give up or tear into someone, tear someone apart. Paul wanted Timothy to remain level-headed. The issue here is self-control. It's funny because only yesterday I mentioned in our private group that this Easter, I crucified my need to respond to everything and everyone. My lips are sealed and my fingers are moving so that I will say nothing or type nothing in response to anyone out of anger or a need to try to control a situation. See, the spiritual reality is that we can never be truly or fully self-controlled. As Paul reminded Timothy, and as Jesus did on the cross, let us remember that God, life is in control, and we are simply called to dare to dream and be all that we individually can, can be. Thank you for watching, and thank you for being with me again, and have a blessed rest of your Easter Sunday. Namaste.